Hey, welcome to Expansions with me. I'm Jane. Thank you so much for taking the time to check this out. I know that normally we get to do this live and this is pre-recorded, so hopefully it will be worth your while. Um, so this is a, a time where we get to dive into some spirituality. Um, I called it Expansions because we're expanding the spiritual dimension of wellness. Um, I'm taking some cards and shuffling them. Oh, isn't that just a noise? I want to pull a card, so um, I'll read it when <laughs> later, <laughs> at some point. This is what I do, just so you know. Um, I just want to pull a card for the collective, the collective good with a message from the heart. Mm. Okay, so I got one. I'm not gonna look at it yet. So that's how I start every day for myself. Uh, I pull a deck from an Oracle card and then I read whatever it says. This is a Rumi deck and it has a Rumi poem to begin. And so, yeah. I'll read it in a minute and see see what it see what it says. So anyway, um, I wanted to talk about something and and just kind of dive in and and mess around with it and and see what it grows into for this little this little bit. That's a weird curl. Um, so I want to talk about fear and how it really is the root of all suffering. How's that for a spiritual topic? So, you know, we go through our lives as humans and the first seven years, we're pretty fearless, right? We're like, dirt, eat it, yeah, I don't care. Let me put my foot in my mouth and I'm just gonna hug anybody. And I'm just gonna cry whenever I want. I'm gonna scream when I wanna scream. And and we are so 110,000% our own expression of the, the, the me. And then, and during those seven years, you know, like we get traumas and stuff, right? Like we get smacked around, we get told what to do, what not to do. We get confined, we get coerced, we get bullied, like all the things that happen to kids in the first seven years and beyond, right? Like not, not saying that everything stops or is only in that seven years, but during those seven years, we get these really deep subconscious programs that really stick with us and they turn into what we would call our shadow. Um, it's where our ego forms and the ego from the unhealthy perspective, the ego that's that operates out of fear to protect the part of us that got hurt, you know, because we don't want to get hurt again. So the ego gets created. Um, and the ego can also get created from a really righteous place, like the I'm better than everyone else. And that could you know, that narcissistic behavior that usually happens when kids are told how awesome they are, and that's all that they're actually told. Isn't that interesting? It's a little background on why we can become the humans that we become, that we get to heal through. And the the spiritual part is is always going to the root of the trauma, basically, and healing it through love, <laughs> really. It's through love, through compassion, through grace, through forgiveness. It, it That's just what it is. And, um, and what I think most traumas manifest as are <sighs> versions of ourselves that operate from a place of fear, right? We will either fear that we'll be judged, right? We'll fear that we will actually be seen and found out. We will fear not being seen or heard or understood. We will fear being left or abandoned. We will fear not being good enough, being rejected, being ridiculed, being made fun of. We will fear 
our openness, right? We'll fear vulnerability, you know, because last time I was myself, I was vulnerable, right? I was having fun as a kid. That's when something bad happened. So then we fear vulnerability. What is vulnerability but living from the heart? What is heart? Living in presence and love. That is source, spirit, God, the universe. Like that's, that's the spiritual relationship. So, you know, we grow up with all these traumas that really just create a whole bunch of fear around our big, beautiful heart. And it starts to just squeeze it and squeeze it and squeeze it so much that we become so stagnant and just completely paralyzed because we're too afraid to do anything. We're afraid to speak up. We're afraid to move. We're afraid to change directions. We're afraid to to say no. We're afraid to say yes. We're afraid to end relationships. We're afraid to move into new ones. We're afraid to even ask for help. Isn't that funny? That things that happen to us throughout our life, but especially in the first seven years, will create a subconscious spiritual wound that, that makes us live in fear, or rather makes us not live as a full, like complete, I mean, we're all complete, that wasn't really the right word, is a full present divine human, right? It's like, it's like a hose that <clears throat> has a block in it, you know, there's something blocking the flow of the water, the water's still there, the hose is still there, it's still all fine, water's still coming out. But there's the, there are blocks in there, and that's what fear looks like like that's what happens when we have fear in us and it leads to suffering you know um, a lot of <clears throat> spiritual texts talk about suffering you know the root of all suffering is and the in the suffering of this and the suffering of that you know to me suffering is just like not living it's, it's suffering is holding on to something that hurts. Suffering is judgment. Suffering is not being able to, to live fully and to be vulnerable and joyful and in love and, and to ask for what we need and to receive what we are given and, and everything. To me, suffering is when we are shut down, right? When we are unable to move forward, when we're unable to communicate, when we're unable to communicate clearly and effectively. You know, if I fear that I'm going to be misunderstood, let's use this example, shall we? This is a fun one. I'm going to be drinking some water. I've been doing the <coughs> thing a lot after Coviticus, so sorry. but I've been drinking a lot of water and a lot of juice and a lot of tea and drinking so many soup things. Anyway, so say we have this fear, right? So like, say we've grown up and we were always um, misunderstood. <laughs> you know, we would say something or do something and someone would <clears throat> shut us down. They would tell us that we're wrong, you know? And, and this could be in any way, like this could have happened in any way. I'm talking like um, you're in school and the math teacher is asking you the question and you get the answer right and then they tell you to prove it. And you're like, I don't know, I just know the answer. This happened to me a lot as a kid. I would just know the answer. But I couldn't, I couldn't like work out the problem. I couldn't prove how I knew it. And so I kept failing. <laughs> you know, they kept telling me that I was therefore not right, although I was actually right, right? Or what if you are a child and you're singing, right? And you're just like, la, 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 la. I'm singing, singing, singing. And your caregiver tells you that you're annoying and you need to shut up, you know? What if you're told that good little boys and good little girls aren't, um, they're, own, they're, they're seen and not heard, right? Wow, good kids. Good kids are only seen and not heard. Good kids are mute. Good kids are silent, right? 
These are subconscious programs that go against our natural human, our natural divinity, our natural program, our nature of self. Because like love, right? Love needs to be seen and heard because it's love. It deserves it. Love is deserving. Like kids do deserve to be seen. They do deserve to be heard. You know, so kids are correct and we may not understand how they know it. You know, kids are smarter than we are. It just always has been the case, you know, and we try to like dumb them down and put them in little boxes and tell them how to be and how to parrot the information that we give them. Although they could, they're like little gurus and they know so much. That's a side story. Anyway. So th these examples, right? So you might be able to think of a time or two or a million times that this has happened to you in your life where especially as a kid, it was, you know, you were told that you had a weird voice. You sounded stupid, that you are stupid every time you told a joke. Maybe, maybe you told a joke and, and someone was like, well, that was stupid, you know, idiot. You know, like whatever, like reflections and things that we were told when we're little, we don't know any differently because we're barely identifying as, as like me. So we are told, hey, you're stupid. So we will create a program that says I'm stupid. I'm only stupid when I speak, but I'm, but I'm good when I'm, when I'm silent, right? In this example. So then we grow up. And we have the subconscious spiritual, the subconscious trauma, the spiritual wound that, that basically says, hey, it's not safe to speak. It's not safe to sing. It's not safe to ask for help. You know, maybe when you were a kid, you asked for help and, they, and you got made fun of. What are you, weak? You know, or maybe you asked for help when you were a kid and you were just told no. Or maybe you asked for help and the person that you were asking was impaired and couldn't help you and you had to take care of them instead, right? So, so many examples come up just with this one little, this one little version of a spiritual trauma. So, <clears throat> we get to identify these things about ourselves, first of all. We get to identify... Who gave us these programs? Who gave us these wounds? Who gave us these traumas? We get to start to forgive them. Wow, that's some work, right? Or at least accept that that's just what happened, you know, and not deny it and also not blame them. Because remembering that hurt people hurt people and everyone truly is doing the best they can. Even if that means they're extremely abusive, that literally is the best that they can do. It's not cool. I don't want it. And also I'm gonna understand and accept that that is a reality. It's like right now, it is raining. I accept it. I don't want it to be raining. I'd really rather be taking a walk around the block. Okay, you know. So anyway, so we identify these experiences that happen to us and really accept the fact that we have spiritual wounds. We do. It's if you've lived the human experience, 99.99% .99 of us have experienced spiritual wounds. Spiritual wounds are basically the, the ones that say that you aren't right, you're not good, and you're not lovable, right? Those are not true. None of that is true for anyone ever, 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 never, ever, ever. And yet there are these messages that we were taught. So we get to identify them. We can identify who gave us these traumas. And now we get to do the work around it. So that what that means is that we get to take a really big, beautiful look on how we show up now. And how we show up now, we can really, really pinpoint these spiritual wounds when we feel discomfort, when we feel suffering, when we feel triggered, when we feel scared, when we feel unworthy, when we feel like nobody cares enough, when we feel like you know, I'm so stupid. I don't know anything. Or we feel like um, I'm not good enough to get that job. I'm not good enough to get any job. I'm not good enough to have anything more than what I have. Or if we have the thoughts of, um, if I get out of this relationship, no one's ever going to want me. I'll just be alone forever. Or, we're, or we have the message that we tell ourselves, and we don't want to be alone forever, but we say, no, I'm fine being alone. I'm just fine being alone because we're afraid to get in another, in another relationship because 
last relationship or previous relationships we had been in, our heart was open and vulnerable and we tried it and it failed. And that hurt was too much for us to handle because of previously, um, previous lived experiences and, and other wounds that were never healed. So when these new relationships, the most recent one, for example, was the biggest heartbreaker. Now I just, I will not be in a relationship again. It's because I never resolved the trauma and the hurt and the grief of all the other experiences that have happened in my life. So all of this is forms of suffering, okay? And that's what I was inspired to really share about is, is suffering. Suffering is so not needed and it is such a choice every single time. And that's a lot of responsibility to be able to look at myself in the mirror and say, damn Jane, you've been suffering and it's because you've chosen to suffer. Mm. That's a big, that's a big heap of humble pie. That's a huge serving of, of accountability. And then it can also serve up a big whole scoop of fear of, oh shit, well, if I've been responsible for my suffering, then first of all, how am I going to get out of it? Right? I don't know how to get out of it. I'm afraid to be any different because if I'm the one that's ultimately been hurting myself, then how can I even trust me to not hurt me anymore? Mm. Self-talk goes deep. Self-talk goes real deep. The last week, I think I spoke about deep rest, deep rest, time to be with ourselves so we can hear ourselves. When we're allowed to be in the space, we can hear these really deep conversations and we are open enough to having them. That's when we start to really uncover and unfurl these, these wounds and how it's manifesting in a really now way. So when I look at the suffering that I've experienced, you know, well, this relationship was really abusive and I can blame him all day long. I can share the labels of the alcoholic and this and narcissist and sociopath. I can name all the labels that he or she had. And that's why I suffered. They are why I suffered. Yeah, so that's a lie that I tell myself because I chose to be in it every moment. I chose to stay in it. I was also dating someone in those times that were just versions of me because then I remember, oh shit, here's the spirituality part, right? We're all one. We're all mere reflections of each other. We're fractaled off from a source of energy, a source of love, God, the infinite. We are fractaled off. So if you're watching me right now, I am you in a different body called Jane, right? Every human that you have a relationship with or an interaction with, they are versions of you. And if I hate that person, <clears throat> there's a part of me that I'm hating. There's a part of me that I'm not accepting. And this is where suffering really starts to form interpersonally because now if I'm not truly accepting of me and what I've been through, my choices, my choice to suffer, then I'm not going to accept you, whoever, in the way you treat anything else outside of you or the way you even treat yourself because I see the suffering and I feel bad for your suffering and I'm going to try to fix your suffering. I'm going to try to point out your suffering. I'm going to try to point out your flaws and your shortcomings because it's much easier to project than to understand that they are mere reflections. And if I'm not comfortable with what you is doing, then there are parts of me that I still get to heal. That, oh, I am still suffering. I'm still hurting myself. Oh, I'm still hurting other people. I'm still holding on to relationships that are unhealthy. I'm still, I'm still uh, doing behaviors that are really unhealthy for my mental health or my physical health or my emotional health, right? I'm still in a victim consciousness. Oh, woe is me. That's suffering, right? So it's a huge topic. And I don't want to talk for the whole hour about this. What I do want to, to do, what I do want to do is apparently sing and shine a light on the concept of suffering, right? 
It's a big concept. You know, if suffering is something that you are aware of in your life and you have identified, perhaps maybe you haven't, doesn't matter, but you know, you're, you're, you have this awareness of like, I don't want to suffer anymore. I've been suffering. I'm ready to not suffer anymore. This is key. That's so key. <laughs> I'm going to get back to that. But it's like, if you're ready and you're like, I don't know how to stop this. Like just a heads up, you know, first of all, Promise Resource Network has tons of peer support specialists and it's all free. If you want a one-on-one -on -one session with me, it's not free, um, but you can book an appointment with me and we can have a spiritual healing session where we get to these root experiences, identify them, call them out, reconfigure and create new ways of being. Because when we recognize that I have been afraid to live my life vulnerably, in joy, in love, in pleasure, then creating the life, being the human that lives in love, vulnerably, in joy, in pleasure. That's like, what the, how do I even do that? Right? Because it's really scary. Because going back to when we were children, last time we did it, we were hurt, hence the trauma in the first place. So I offer one-on-one -on -one sessions just a heads up. So anyway, janetheguide.com if you need that. So suffering, we get to now start to move through it, okay? So I'm gonna offer a couple tools and you can try them out and take them with a grain of salt because suffering runs deep. Our egos will create multifaceted versions of themselves to um, rationalize why it's even there in the first place, why we're better off without, without leaving this relationship. We're better off staying here. We're better off doing this. You're just, you're better off. You're safer. You're safer being hurt in this way. You're, you're, you're safer in suffering than in healing, which is a lie, right? It is. It, it's a lie. It is actually safe to heal always a hundred percent of the time. It may not be fun, <laughs> but fuck, suffering forever, that kind of sucks, right? And you can do it for lifetimes. Many of us have done it for lifetimes. And at any given point, we can say, I'm ready to release suffering and I'm ready to live my life. Now, when the ego hears that, right, which again was created to protect us when we had these traumas in the first place, the ego says, no, 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 here, here. I'm going to call in experiences to prove to you why I'm so important in your life, right? Ego is going to get real loud. We're going to get tested. It's just the way it works, right? But the back to that point that I made that I said I'd get back to, so glad I remembered. We get to decide, right? And once we make a decision, we declare it to be so. We declare it as the reality that we want and that we deserve and we got to know it, right? If I choose, if I decide to go to Target, right? I declare I'm going to Target. I'm probably going to get there, you know? Like now I've told everybody, I've already made a plan, I got my list, da, 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 da right? So if I declare that I am ready to release suffering, that I am ready to live a life liberated from pain and suffering, because suffering is going to cause you pain 100% of the time. If I declare that I'm ready to live a life in love and joy and peace, I declare that I am worthy of living a life in love and joy and peace. I am willing to release all of the suffering that I have experienced, I'm ready to release the suffering that I am currently experiencing because I'm declaring a life without it. If we don't state these things either out loud or with our heart real loud, it then then it's it's a moot point. It won't work, right? It's like if I really want pizza, but I won't get off of the sofa to make it, buy it, or order it, I'm not going to get it, right? Except for those miracles that do happen, because, and this is another thing, I want to talk about this. Unless a miracle happens and someone just literally knocks on your door and shows up and it's your friend with a pizza. These things happen. 
And it is because the heart can be loud enough and we can envision it enough that it puts it like a calling out, like a bat signal. And if someone's picking up that frequency, they may not even consciously know that you've been wanting a pizza all day and they just show up with it. So there's the action is, is the declaration. And maybe the declaration is in this example of just like, I really want a pizza. I do. I just really want a pizza. And it, the declaration could be, I really want to live a life in joy and peace. I really do. I really want to live a joyful, peaceful, loving life. I do. And you may not even know that you're ready to give up suffering. But what's going to happen is opportunities are going to come up for you to live a joyful, peaceful, loving life. And if you're still holding on to that in which is causing you suffering, you will see the loving life and the joyful life and the peaceful. You'll see it. It'll be right in front of your face. And then you're going to be like, no. And you're going to resist it. You're going to push it away. You'll miss the call. That's okay. You keep, you, well, you'll keep getting call every time. Like, it's fine. It's not like you messed up ever. So it's not too late. No matter where you are in your life, it's not too late to stop suffering. You can stop suffering right now. In this now moment, you can be healed now. <laughs> but for real, you can. You got to know you deserve to live a life in joy and peace. You got to know that you deserve to, to be free of pain and suffering. You got to know this and you got to trust yourself because let me remind you that you have gotten yourself to where you are now and you've gotten yourself with it, most of us, with all of our appendages, with our eyeballs, with our heads still attached, you know, like we're still pretty much here. We may have lost a couple digits or whatever, you know, we may have broken our, our heart a couple times, you know, we may have lost our marbles a couple of times. But you've gotten you to this now moment. In this now moment, you've never known more than what you know right now. You have more knowledge, more experience, more capacity to love because of all of that in this now moment. So thank you. Please, you thank you. Thank you for living your life and being in all the suffering that you've ever experienced because you are now the strong, resilient bountiful, loving human that you wouldn't be without it. So you start with that. Remember that. And then remember that, that the way we move through suffering is vulnerability. It's trust. It's love. It's compassion for the human, the me, right? That feels fear. And in crossing those thresholds and giving myself a little, a little angelic hug and then kicking my ass just a little bit to nudge me through that threshold of discomfort and into that space of real big vulnerable communication, vulnerable presence, authentic expression of the me that I am. Because when we are not vulnerable, when we're living attached to pain and suffering, we are constricted. Our energetic body literally wobbles. It morphs. Our subtle body changes. We aren't this radiant light being. We're still light beings, duh, because we're all energy. We don't radiate it out. It doesn't project out. We want to project it out just so you know, like for real though, you want to project the light that you are. Because imagine you're a sunshine and all of a sudden you, you're you like, I don't want to project my light. You'd be hurting a lot of people, right? The sun does it. The sun has burned many, many people in its life, big time, to the point of cancers, if that's, if that's a belief that you have, you know? <clears throat> That's a whole other story. That's a body, mind, spirit topic. Um, that's a really good one. I might talk about that next week. Hmm. This week. Anyway, the sun has hurt many people. It's burned a lot of crops. <laughs> you know, it has caused so much destruction. The magnetic energy and the CMEs and the plasma waves and the, the 
the coronal air streams that come and hit us and we have all these geomagnetic events, the sun has done a lot of damage for earthlings. And yet we still love it. We still, many cultures worship it because we recognize that without it, we would be dead, <laughs> right? We would die. It is our source of energy. Water is life, right? Without it, we are dead. Water is life. Sun is the source of life energy. We need both, right? We need that, that fluid movement. We need that, that sun, right? Yeah. It's like masculine, feminine. It's like the DNA strand. It all, it's all the same stuff. Anyway, the sun has done a lot of damage, y'all. So have you. <laughs> so have all the people that hurt you. Yep, it is. I've heard a ton of people. And I'm going to hurt more if I'm in suffering because I hurt me. And whenever we see anyone suffering, it sucks. Like nobody wants to see anyone suffering. Nobody wants to see the earth suffer. No one wants to see an ocean full of plastic. Like nobody wants that. So we get to remember these things and say, okay, you know what? I have hurt people. I have been hurt. And damn it, I'm ready to shine. I'm ready to be, express, radiate, love. Because love itself is, a, is life. Love is life, period. So let life shine through you. Let love shine through you. Whatever word, let God shine through you. Let whatever, Jesus, Buddha, whatever the word is that really resonates for you, let it shine through you because it is you. The only thing that stops it from being you is the attachment to suffering. And attachment to suffering, again, it's just an attachment. And it is a choice. It's a choice. So now we get to start take, taking real big responsibility for all the suffering, get our asses out of victim mode and victim consciousness. And well, they do this and they do that. And I don't like when they do these things and say, you know what? I don't like it when they do these things. And I'm still going to ask for what I need. I'm going to, I'm going to just end those relationships. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to still make my decisions. I'm still going to love them. I may not like what they do, but I'm going to love them because I see that they're in their own suffering. And that's why they're treating me that way. I'm just going to put up boundaries now so they can't treat me that way. I'm going to tell them, hey, that hurts my feelings when you do that. You know, and I'm, I'm not mad at you for doing that. I'm just letting you know that your actions create a space for me where I get to do healing every single time I'm with you. Because every time I'm with you, I get to feel unworthy. <laughs> Thank you. Because I'm not going to suffer anymore in your presence. In fact, I'm going to use your presence for the old suffering that I used to be in with you. And I'm going to use it for my own personal growth to remember how worthy I am of love. So all the middle fingers, love you, mean it. We get to move through suffering, right? The Buddhist tradition it has tons and tons of, 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 most of the teaching is around suffering and being free from suffering. You know, I've studied some Buddhism. I've studied some Hinduism. I've studied metaphysics. I've studied so much and suffering will create pain mental pain physical pain emotional pain social pain environmental pain it manifests everywhere and i'm done with it i'm so done with it y'all like i am over it i'm over my own personal suffering if something doesn't light me up, if it's not a fuck, yeah, uh, then it's a no, mm -mm, nope. If something feels heavy on my heart, then I, I get to speak it. I get to share it, whether that's to, the, to, to a person or <clears throat> to a therapist or to the mirror that I'm looking at. So I'm talking to myself, you know, but if something is heavy, then that's suffering, so I can either accept it so that it's not suffering anymore or I can change it so that it's not suffering anymore. That's where we have free will. That's where we have the freedom to choose. Hey, this doesn't feel good. I'm not going to do it. 
And that takes big courage, big bravery, big guts. And it takes really big hearts. It takes a really big heart to remember that it is worthy of being, being seen, being heard, being felt, being, ex being expressed. It takes a courageous heart and it's what the heart's nature is. The heart's nature is to be love, you know, to be flowing in and out all the time, like ebb and flow and be cyclical and natural and, and go into dormant times and go into expansion times because love is life. Life is love. Call it whatever you want. I'm going to take a drink of water. I'm going to read this card. I love where this conversation, this topic has gone. Ooh, I've never seen this card. Okay. <clears throat> the card says, enter the garden of delights. I don't know if you can see that. So it's a little bit of art. And then it has the words down there. It's really uh, kind of faint on there. But again, it's the roomy deck. And it's the back of it. And the book. Oh, it's backward. Hmm. I'm going to read just a little bit of what this card says, and maybe it will have some, some wisdom to it to add to this conversation. <clears throat> so it is a roomy poem, so I will read that. And then Alana Fairchild, who is the woman who writes and channels these books, she um, expands on the poem. So I'll just read a, just a tiny little bit of that. Okay, take a deep breath with me, y'all. And just let it go. So the card says, enter the garden of delights. It says, are you aware that sweetness is found everywhere in town? Are you aware that winter is gone and spring has come around? Are you aware that sweet basil and the carnation are whispering in the garden and laughing about how simply everything is found? Are you aware the nightingale has come back from its flight, singing out messages of love to spread delight with every sound? Everything in the garden is granted the right from the divine court to appear for delight, for our delight. Everything is here to make the earth green and alive as heaven for our life. What remains buried in the soil will always endeavor to reach out. No one truly alive can ever be pawned to a prison or a tomb. And Alana Fairchild uh, continues on and, um, and it says, There's a sweet spot when entering the Garden of Delight, a moment where the senses have gorged themselves upon beauty and become heavy with their fullness slowing the mind so that it can perceive the divine beloved dancing behind the veils of nature. But first comes the sensual feasting, blooming orchids arrest the grace with their startling and strange beauty. Nectar from the ripest fruits of the garden drips, luscious and sweet, upon a savoring tongue. Hungry for gossip, the ear shamelessly eavesdrop upon the birds in melodic conversation. They sing of greatest, most passionate love for boundless living joy. Their ears open wide to take it all in. The craving for touch is sated by rough textured bark falling from the ancient trees, soft dewy grasses cool in the shade, the crunching leaves making their sounds under the hot sun and dancing feet, and the caress of that sunlight upon bare shoulders with weight of its own like a silken wrap placed just so by a caressing lover's hand. The breeze, the very breath of the beloved earth mother, is sweet with the scent of lavender and jasmine warmed by the sun father. Oh, drink it in until your arms raise themselves to the heaven, your head tilts, eyes rolling back in your head, and your sacred animal body is mindless and in love. The garden of delights, narcotic in effect, lulling the senses from tension into sacred language that love may be experienced. Let us rest here in the midst of so much life, where the goodness of life is felt and the heart is free from any prison of pain or doubt. 
Mm. Come, be in the garden with me now. Let us be free and feast to our heart's content. Mm. Get it, Alana Fairchild. Seriously, y'all. But I know it's backward. Can't help it. To me, garden this enter the garden of delights, like how beautiful that sounded, right? It just felt so good. Like, yes, take me there. If I'm in suffering, I won't experience that. I can't, right? Instead of it feeling like the sun is, is caressing my shoulders, I would be in suffering. That's too hot, right? I don't like it. Oh, I won't, I won't be able to taste the ripe fruit, right? It's got too much sugar in it. I'm too worried about my weight. I'm too worried about being judged. I may not even go outside. I'm too afraid to be out there. And when we let go of suffering, every little thing is magnificent. Everything is magnificent when we release suffering. When we start to heal spiritual wounds, when we dive deep into that space and really allow love to come in, y'all, I'm telling you, it's nuts. It's like the birds are singing for you. The clouds are shaped with faces that are only for you to see. The wind blows at just the right time when you move your hand. The traffic parts like whatever sea that is in the Bible. You know, like the parking place always comes up. The person taking your order is just happy to see you. And you bring so much joy wherever you go. You walk into a room and you see people light up. People are happy that you're there. Everything smells like divinity. You recognize the miraculous nature of you and life on this earth, of the earth herself. You feel the magic and the abundance beneath you and around you in every breath and step you take. The life without suffering is sweet. It's delicious. It's abundant as fuck magical. It's everywhere. And the only thing that stops us is when we have a mindset of suffering. The mind is where the ego lives. The heart gets to tell the mind, let's look at the ego, let's love this baby, let's integrate it. Thank you, shadow. I'm gonna live now with an open heart, able to love everything, able to accept what is, able to remember that I am deserving and worthy of all of the love because I am in fact love. I am life. Hmm. So I will end on that note. Recognize suffering. Choose and declare it is no longer yours to bear. Take the steps, move vulnerably through a life that is liberated, that's joyful, that's kind and compassionate and all the fun things. So that when you do experience suffering moments, they don't knock you down. They don't take you out. You learn, you grow, and you expand even more, and you end up welcoming those hard times because they are the gifts. So I love you so much. If you found this helpful in any way, please share it. You know, like send it to somebody you love you know, share it. Yeah, share the love. Share whatever it is you learn from it. You know, whether it's through your being or through your sharing verbally, through whatever it is you create in the world. And know that you're loved. Just know whatever it is that you need to know right now. Just know that you're loved. You're loved because you are you. You're so loved because you're you. You are so perfect. You are so complete. You are so magical and miraculous in your nature. 
You are beautiful, you're brilliant, you are divine, you are life itself, you are nature. You are the only you on this planet. And I am grateful for your presence, truly. So I love you, take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all so soon. Bye y'all.